Hey everybody, it's Robert Dunn from ArtTop10.com and I'm very pleased today to be chatting with Mona Osman. Mona, hello. Hey. <laughs> hey, so how are you? It's another crazy hot yeah. day in London, isn't it? Yeah, well, in Bristol as well. It's oh, you're really in Bristol? Nice and yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Where, so. where, whereabouts in Bristol are you? Um, I'm, I'm in South Bristol, in Bedminster. Okay. I moved here two and a half years ago, but I was in London before. Oh, check it out. I, I was at university in Bristol. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, ages ago. So, but it's a nice, a nice town, isn't it? Oh, I absolutely love it. Really, really love it's it. It's really cool. It's got a nice chilled atmosphere. Yes. So, so let, we'll have a look at the pictures in a minute. Let's just start with a few sort of general questions. So, tell me, what what got you into painting in the first place? Um, I mean, I think it was. It's coming from. Well, not, I think definitely it's coming from my childhood. Um, I used to be a very sort of timid and shy uh, kid and um, for many years I um, I was homeschooled because I got so nervous every time I had to go to school um, I had um, stomach problems and all sorts so I didn't really had a chance to socialize and have friends okay. so I started to use my drawings as my imaginary friend and okay. then from then on, I think I always had like a special connection with art. And then, yes, I think it was just sort of always there for me. Oh, that's cool. So it was actually so, so, I mean, we'll have a look at the pictures in a minute. But so mm -hmm. they're, they're, how would you describe your paintings? Would you say that? Um, I mean, I would say I always say that it's sort of abstract, figurative. I normally work on a large scale. Uh, they really quite colourful and um, I really like to use like heavy textures and different kind of materials gotcha. in my painting. Um, but I would also say they, they have like a, a quite strong, like the, the subject matter is sort of based around philosophy. So, so Mona, you were saying there's quite a lot of philosophy behind the paintings. So what, what, what's the philosophy behind it? So basically I, I was always very interested about you know the the identity of oneself, um, the the whole. I mean, to to explain it, why basically, um, I was born in Budapest. Um, my mom is Jewish. My uh, dad is um, um, Sudanese and Muslim. Um, in Hungary, in the nineties, there were many mixed race people. So, and I went to a Jewish school. So, okay. growing up. Um, I always had this sort of question in my head, like who am I, what I am. Um, and then also when I was 12, my whole family moved to France. I lived there for three wow. years. So that was like a whole new kind of chapter. <laughs> and I, I went back to Budapest. And then when I was 17, I moved to London. Huh? So I always, I always uh, wondered uh, about my identity and my uh, place in this world but moving to London what I realized that it's not really who or what I am but how I relate to okay. uh, the given um, circumstances and so that was one of the starting points so but I wanted to approach this question from a less personal okay. um, yeah. uh, approach in a more universal scale and then it sort of developed from there, and I got into to I started to read um, Sartre. I started to read I don't know like from the 18th century on like different kind of philosophers. Okay. And I found that that the this platform was really helpful to be able to think about things that were bothering me on a personal level, okay. but I could express it in a in a more universal level that you know people could. Okay perhaps connect to a bit more. So so painting's always had quite a sort of personal journey aspect for you in a way. Definitely, definitely. But I also feel like that, um, because I'm not really good with words, and <laughs> um, I also feel like that it's my way of uh, connecting to the world. And I really, really enjoy when, say, if after uh, an exhibition, people come back to me and say that I could really connect to the to the topic of their painting or okay. or in any way so um that's also a very important aspect oh, yeah. for me 
That's really cool. Well, look, let, let, let's have a look at one of the pictures. I think it'll be mm -hmm. quite exciting now we've had a bit of an intro. <laughs> right. right, so this is a very old painting of mine. Okay, cool. Um, I did it actually for my um, BA degree show okay, um, nice. at Paul Smith. And this was the kind of this was the first painting that that was really directly uh, based on on philosophy and that sort of and this was a painting that um, helped me starting off I think on this kind of journey. Okay. Um, so at that time I was really really influenced by Piet Mondrian and okay. how he's um, using the primary colors. As, okay. a, as a building book okay. and um, and it was really interesting for me to look at his practice and how he's shifted from figurative landscape into this um, simplified and purified uh, form of depicting okay. sort of the, the, the reality around him and um, since he was also a mathematician's uh, mathematician okay. he kind of used all these primary colors or like the grids yeah. to create um, a system and, and and it was about the system and as I mentioned previously that it's for me as well you know moving to London it was a massive realization that yeah. it's not about in London where, where it's, it's so multicultural it's yeah. not about you know being Muslim or Jewish or black or white or whatever. It's about yeah. how you are relating to your surroundings. So sure. again, it's about the system and it's about the dynamic. Yeah. And um, so in this painting, um, as you can see on the top uh, middle bit, there are all these primary colors. Yeah, yeah, you've got a lovely the primary primary. And, and then behind it, there is that kind of void. But then in the middle, just like yeah. on a stage, as you know. Yeah, um, I think it looks a bit stage-like, yeah. Yeah, so there are all these actors, I guess, as Shakespeare oh, okay. um, was saying, you know, that we are actors oh, on this stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, cool. and and then and then I was thinking that you know, whatever I, I was also reading at the time, the Birth of Tragedy by Nietzsche, and okay. there is a bit where it goes, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm just paraphrasing here. Yeah, it's not yeah, how it was. Um, but if it's a dream, I might as well dream on. That was like the main thing. So, okay. you know, if, if we are in a setup where if we are in, 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 in on a stage, it really doesn't matter. You just have to kind of keep on playing. So yeah. uh, I was playing around with this idea of, you know, like there is this set of, um, you know, systems yeah. the same way as, I don't know, Mondrian would uh, try to depict it with his, um, geometrical shapes and uh, primary colors yeah. and then and then and then we are just moving around in, <laughs> in, in that space in that, in that space um, absolutely so that's why like this painting is very important for me despite it's now six years old oh, okay um, and uh, yeah so from then on um this after this painting um I always say that I've got. I really like to work in um, in in sets, or uh, I like to to make several paintings okay. from so the. For, so can I just ask you? So so what what are the different figures in in the foreground of them? Um, to be fair, they they don't have like a specific role. Okay, okay. they are just uh, different entities, and you know, yeah, and they're. You know, they all have their weird kind of... Yeah, yeah, they have got kind of like <laughs> weird bodies and sort of one of them looks... I mean, they look a bit sort of human and half-human or one of them looks a bit like a sort of wild goat over there. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, um, yeah, they, they're kind of frightening and endearing at the same time. Um, but, yeah, so so it really helped me to, to, um, to kind of start a new chapter I suppose okay. and I think after this so as I said I really like working in in um, series and okay. um, and then uh, whatever that is like I normally have like a kind of in-between phase where I work out the next kind of project I like to call them projects okay and then um, and then I I, I um, 
go for the the real thing or the real main project. Okay, okay, so, cool. Go on. Show, show, show us the next project. <laughs> okay, so after that, like, I mean, probably I was having this in between stage for about a year. Okay. But I started off with uh, the series called Red Cube, and I think I was working on it for about two years. Okay. So I'm going to try to find the red cube painting. So the red cube was the idea behind the red cube was to have a a reoccurring motif um, or object that doesn't have any specific meaning. But throughout the repetition, throughout the the series of paintings, it gained a meaning because its essence was built up how uh, throughout the the appearance of the red cube in in drawings and in paintings and so, so, so you're actually using the painting to give this thing a kind of meaning in a way exactly hmm. exactly oh. and again it's the same thing that it's about the how that object relates to its surroundings and to to everything else it's not and and that's what gives the meaning of the red cube. Okay. Um, now, let me see. Okay. So this one, can you see it now? Yeah, yeah I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's called monads because monads, it's, it's, um, it's a term that appears in, in philosophy, in mathematics, in different okay. kind of sciences. And basically a monad is like, a, I have to say, it's like a unit. Okay. Um, that then relates to other monads and um, it has like different kind of meanings. Okay. Um, and in this painting, um, I already, so I, as I mentioned, the red cube, yeah. which was also, it had like this sort of, I don't know, the, the, the essence of a driving force okay. or like, um, to, like it was the kind of yeah. the motivating element in the paintings. But I realized that it would be, better and it would make more sense if there was something like a like the black cube which appears okay. on the right okay. uh, top corner to juxtapose the the red cube and, and and through this contrast um give it a clearer sense so is the red cube so, like a positive thing is it it is a positive thing uh but throughout the years because as i said i think i was working on this of series about two and a half years and actually okay. for my um master's degree I, I wrote my dissertation about the red cube okay. Okay. and there was this whole kind of um i, I, I you know I, I really like to work uh, write about my my paintings and my okay. drawings and i like to uh keep like a journal of these thought processes okay. and um eventually like as the the idea of the red cube as it was developing, there was also um, this thing that came to my mind that that the the overly uh, strong urge to yeah. to shape that red cube okay. uh, can actually can it can backfire. So when okay. you want to when you want to find out. You know, the your essence too much and you want to you know yeah. or, or or you want to go somewhere get somewhere too much um too eagerly yeah. it can get that fire uh, okay. it can backfire and i can go from the red cube it can go very soon to the black cube <laughs> okay. and okay. and anyway so so i like i wrote so many uh <laughs> Sketchbooks that you know, yeah. I, I completely got into this whole sort of idea of the of, of, of this world of red cubes and black, black cubes. cubes. <laughs> um, yeah, that's really and, cool. Uh, so, so in all the paintings, do they hover at the top or do they appear in different places? Um, it, they have different. Um, I'm trying to find a painting. So here it's called Bad Faith. Um, so Bad Faith, it, it was a term um, used by Jean Paul Sartre. And um, it's actually a little bit like what I was saying about the red cube backfiring into the the into the black cube. Yeah. And uh, what Sartre is um, talking about when he uh, talks about the bad faith is that when when people want to label themselves too much 
because they want to be something. Then he come like he's got this famous um, um, example of the waiter who is okay. he's all like he's doing all these gestures, overly doing these gestures of the of a waiter, and yeah. and he wants to be that waiter so badly because he's actually anxious of not having an an essence or like a, a, a personality and that, and okay. because of that he slips into um into an on uh a not truthful idea of, of itself. Okay. So that um because you can't, you know, you're not just one thing. Yeah. So in this painting it it was kind of the beginning of the black the um, introduction of the black cube. Okay, okay. So the black got, cube emerged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can sort of see that it, yeah. Slightly appear, it got the on the top left corner. Oh yeah. So you've got the main figure having the the red cube, and then there is this monster-like creature kind of crushing it. Yeah, the red in, cube's um, got crushed between the two people, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. Then, so, so yeah. Right. So the red cube always had different, you know, um, positioning, and and it it kind of evolved like a, with um, throughout this time, and um, eventually. This, like, um, yeah. the my latest, well, it, my, I had a show in Italy uh, at the Colettione Maramotti in October last year. Yeah. And, I mean, I think I painted this painting, you know, probably 2015, so okay. it, it was like five years ago. Yeah. But again, um, I feel like that all these projects are building on top of each other, so... Okay. I like to look at my practice as more like a continuous sure. sort of storyline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm so talking about like the black, um, the black cube, red cube, and all that, and being too eager. Yeah. Um, I um, a couple of years ago, I reread the whole story of the Tower of Babel um, okay. from from the Bible. Sure. And um, I. I was thinking about the sort of philosophical or like yeah. um, meaning of that story, okay. where um, you know the the people are building the the tower to get close to yeah. Yeah. God yeah. and to to you know get close to to the doors of heaven, and then sure. and then God gets angry and says yeah. that uh, and to see God, and they, mm. he gets angry because. You know, them building the tower means that they are not, um, you know, not believing uh, enough in him. Sure. So he mixes up all the languages, and the yeah, um, yeah. and the tower never gets built. Yeah. So I painted. Yeah. So this is this is the painting that that kind of served the basis for that exhibition. Although this wasn't a part of the exhibition. Okay. Um, and so I tried to create a parallel between the whole. Uh, Tower of Babel uh, story, and and I tried to make it into a more kind of um, metaphorical sure. um, message. So I was okay. thinking about how you know how we how the the bad faith operates, and how like when when you when you narrow down this story to one individual, and you think about. Um, how like what's your I started to ask this question that what's what's the tower of Babel for for one individual okay and Interesting. sort of like again you know to my sketchbook like writing yeah. stuff down making little drawings and I sort of got to the conclusion that that if if um the 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 tower so actually, so let's start, let me start again. <laughs> yeah. uh, who is God um, in this story? If you if you narrow it down to an individual, yeah, I think it's, it's nice to take that universal story and make it very personal. It's quite interesting. I mean, I think I think, um, and I hope I don't offend anyone with that. But I I don't practice any religion, and despite you know my mom is really, um, Jewish and my dad is Muslim, perhaps for that very reason I don't practice any religion. But no. I like to look at biblical stories yeah. in a more, um, you know, in in a way that like I, I think um, 
it's full of very interesting um trying to find the right word like um they've got very sort of i mean they're deeply fertile sort of stories that talk to everybody on a grand scale yeah. don't they? and personal level so. and 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 i think that you know you don't have to be religious you can no, find the moral not. story the more uh, the moral importance yeah. of the stories and i think you know if you if you don't take it literally, it is actually a very interesting philosophical book. Yeah. book. Uh, um, that's my personal approach. Yeah, to no, it. no, no, absolutely. So, so I started to to think about like who's God in this whole story, and I, and then the, I, from this painting on, I created this character called the Absolute Self. Okay. And the Absolute Self is. The, the guy in the top right corner and that's like um okay just just show me with your cursor which one that is that's oh uh, yeah. yeah so there yeah okay cool and, that's the absolute uh, self cool that's the absolute self and and the absolute self is this irrealistic kind of version of ourselves where okay. we think that the the one that we want to be and uh you know us trying to work towards that 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 non-realistic image yeah. is when you know and, and trying to get there and trying to figure out who we are what we are and you know being re- too too um eager to do this that's yeah. us building the tower and okay um, and the confusion of the languages is us you know being co- unhappy and and eventually mm-hmm. you know being comp- uh, constantly uh, unsatisfied with ourselves yeah yeah so yeah. that that's what stops the the construction of the tower because we want to get to a point that that we cannot so i mean in a nutshell that was the idea and it's not behind and so and so who who are like the other faces like like the face lower down on the right hand side halfway down is that another um i mean the the bottom on this one is the kind of i don't know we'd say like the base of us and 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 the, the the that's when you hit back. Uh, okay. That's the person who who experiences the I don't know the ultimate backlash of the the black cube uh, okay. carrying the weight of this tower and kind of slowly merging into the ground and and you know being a little bit. I mean it doesn't show in the on the image unfortunately, yeah. but I used a lot of um, like liquid latex to give it texture. Okay. Um, I can see quite a lot of texture like on the. Like who, there's a little green green creature sort of on the left hand side, middle way up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the kind of um, how to say um, the 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 chaotic kind of melange of the different kind of characters okay. of we want of of who we want to be and then okay. and all these sort of. I mean, I'm I'm not that. I have to say that I'm not that conscious about these characters when I paint them okay. often. After when I step back, I kind of go like, "Oh, actually," because I have I normally have like a, a basic idea, yeah. a basic, and then I kind of go with the flow. I like to I like to, however, keep the the execution of the work, you know, as much as I can, close to the subject matter, okay. and that to you know if it's, I think that, the more. I think that's why often it has like my paintings have very kind of rough surfaces and very kind of yeah I can see bits of them have got a nice rough texture and so then, I, when, when you're painting them are, are you thinking in them of terms of being decorative or because they're they're very uh, pretty to look at I mean they're... oh hey. no 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 I don't I I find them um, I think the patterns they're making and that kind of Repetition and dots. Yeah. It's not for um, it's not for um, decoration. And actually, I painted. Uh, I made a painting last summer for um, um, the um, Collezione um, Maramotti for the exhibition. Okay. And it was then when I, it's it was a really big painting. It was about two and a half meters by you know one eighty, I suppose. Okay. It was and it was like the final piece that I made for the show. Yeah. And I was 
I'll show you um, yeah. a photo. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. So it was a, it was a kind of this deconstructed um, absolute self face. I was thinking when I was painting it because I just, and then I find something really meditative about making the patterns and okay. it's almost like I just go with it and go and go and go and go and then my thoughts are sort of flowing. I really like it. So okay. sometimes when I can't sleep, I get my sketchbook into bed okay. and then I just go like patterns okay. and it really sort of relaxes me and, okay. and I, yeah, it's, it's almost like meditation. Yeah, yeah. But as I painting this painting, I was thinking that am I mapping out the face by making all these sections and I'm making all these dots and then I connect these these sections and areas in yeah. or am I actually trying to disguise or hide something and then okay. I was thinking the um the role because I like to reflect on 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 a you know on the process because often sometimes what I do it's not Def, not, not uh, certainly conscious in the way that mm. um, when I, that's why I really like to paint on large scales because yeah. when you are you know when you're working on a really big canvas um, yeah. because it's it, it's very kind of physical and you know sometimes I put music on yeah. and I just get this completely different zone yeah um, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah and so yeah. I like to sometimes step back and and also reflect on what and why I did uh, certain things within the paintings, uh, even so, if it's... So when you're painting know. it, you're not, you're, sorry, this doesn't make quite make sense, but you're sort of not quite there, or you're in a different state when you're painting it. But, yeah, but do you, I would say so. But do you, and have, also, do you have the basic structure mapped out, or does that appear as well when uh, you're not concentrating? I, so I have a very loose, loose structure, I think, as, as in terms of the visuals, so I normally yeah. kind of get you out just a little bit, just so I have a, like a, 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 a little thing to go back to. Um, I, I think for me, the plan, when I make a plan for a work, it's more about the the um, ideas behind it. So okay. I, and I always write like many, many pages of a, really? of a work. And Every also, I think just going back to, to what I said at the beginning, yeah. um, one thing that I noticed that kind of remains, so as, as my paintings and drawings were my imaginary friends yeah. when I was a kid, yeah. I still this thing um, that sometimes I, I get myself almost playing Barbie between the characters. Okay. <laughs> they talk to each other. That's what I say. It, it, I love, love of painting because <laughs> I just I completely switch off and I feel like that <laughs> I'm this completely different world. <laughs> Do I sound like <laughs> like a crazy woman, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really cool. I like them. They're like it's quite interesting. They're like oh, I. It, it's it's a weird thing because they're kind of because I can see how you started on that sort of playset, but now now the 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 playset has sort of disappeared, and they're all mixed in this sort of whirlpool of interest. No, it's really mm -hmm. cool. I like it. So. So I, th I think if you, I, I think what was Emily saying? There was something about Stella McCartney was into them or got one or something. Uh, yeah, I, I I had the chance to to be part of this really exciting um, project a few weeks ago. So I got a phone call from the Sachi Gallery um, saying that they are trying their best to kind of keep the the artwork you know alive on okay. a, on an online platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have like these weekly takeovers, and um, they did a collaboration with um, with Stella McCartney, where um, they invited a few artists, including myself, to do this um, live drawing session okay. with one of um, Stella McCartney's uh, model, Margot Jabella, okay. um, wearing Stella McCartney clothes, okay. and. Um, I'm just gonna to try to look up the painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, so they, um, we had a, a, a Zoom session, and Margoja was um, um, wearing Stella's clothes. It was really interesting. There were a few poses, and okay, and then cool. we all had to to submit the work um, 
and then it was posted with a little video as well yeah, on yeah. Salamat stage. So it was really, really exciting. And uh, really I cool. kind of took a different <laughs> approach to it because I, I'll be honest, like, I, like, like drawing is not, you know, my forte. Um, no, no, and no. I don't, enjoy, to be honest, I, I don't enjoy that much. Like, it doesn't interest me. But what I found really interesting in that, uh, it was the setup of the, um, yeah. of the project that, you know, we were all like on this on this screen, you know, um, you know how Zoom works. Like there was yeah, somebody yeah. that scared, and then, um, and that really, really fascinated me. And then, you know, like we call it live drawing, but it's not live drawing. And I think it was all a bit, I don't know. I think it was uh, everyone was a little bit nervous about. It. <laughs> not and so, uh, so you actually but, did you did the live drawing via Zoom. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's thank right. you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what I did, I used the different pieces of the poses that I did. Sure. Yeah. And um, so that was one of the poses. That was one of the poses. That little one was one. And so okay. there were four poses, and that one there. Cool. And that one, I just, I, I kind of added like, um, I, don't know, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a face, and then from the face there is. Yeah. Yeah. Another figure growing out. Oh yeah, I can see. I can see absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Um, but then the main face is like there are tears running down, and it's yeah. like that. But the head, uh, the body that grows out of um, of, of of the head, um, it has like a cigarette and a cocktail glass okay. in it. Yeah, cool. That you know, like looks really confident, but actually it's just a. Uh, uh, a bravado kind of thing and that's how I felt like in this it was just so weird yeah, uh, and I think everyone was a bit like oh god like and also it's just such a you know like being involved in a project with the such a gallery at the yeah, yeah. Style, you know like it was uh, huge but I then I, I put uh, all these drawings on a and um, paintings on on a large sort of canvas so like yeah 160 by 120 yeah. centimeters yeah and then create this collage and then i put like you know more grid like here the the patterns had like a, yeah. a clearer role it's not entirely finished because i'd like to polish it up a little bit okay. but um, yeah and it's very exciting because it's, it's kinda, a beard yeah it's kind of cool I, I like how you said all the all, all the squares and stuff are like the laptop screen and everything it's nice i like that <laughs> It's a, yeah, it's like a freaky sort of ex painting of the experience in a way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Well, it's really good. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Oh man. Anyway, I, I mean, I, I don't know how long we've been going. Probably, uh, probably quite a long time. <laughs> but yeah. but, but um, we should probably begin to round it up. But is there any other okay. one piece you'd like to show me? Just to uh, sort of. No, no. I mean, I was like lately. Because as I said, like I'm still kind of rearranging the, the my studio, yeah. uh, but like with the lockdown, it was just interesting to play around with stuff. Like I'm, and I like making headpieces, so I made. Like, okay. Oh man, cool with the mask, love yeah. it. <laughs> so it was good because um, it's like all the shows are now postponed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I tried to keep it positive and you know just yeah. um, experiment. Because uh, before uh, I didn't have that much time for yeah, it. So. Yeah. I like the headdress. It's, it's actually the headdress actually got it's strangely like the paintings, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's got the same sort of same sort of you know uh, visual interest, isn't it? It's really cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. So would you wear that? Would you wear that in the tube? Oh, uh, I think then. Um, Crazy, I had pieces. It's, it's, I have to have a glass of wine before that. <laughs> yeah, like weird looks. But then when I have, for example, an opening or I'm going to someone else's opening, I'd like to go with like head, hairdressers. Head, well, yeah, I'm trying to find. Oh, yeah, have you got other uh, hairdressers? <laughs> uh, yeah, so like from the actual Italian exhibition. I don't know. I think I've seen some pictures of that before, but I didn't notice yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> it could be. So yeah, I do. I do wear them uh, in public as well, <laughs> but just for special occasions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I can't really see it. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 you, oh, you can almost see it, can't you? So, Mona, I've, I've loved chatting. It's been really good fun. Um, and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to coming to your next private view to see the headdress. And... Yeah, exactly. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Cool. Well, brilliant. Thank you so much. I'm really interested. It's fascinating to learn about the paintings and all, all the thought that actually goes into them. It's, it's really cool to know the sort of amount of effort that goes behind them. Yeah. And thank you very much as well for no. inviting me for this chat. No, it's cool. Okay, then. Lovely. <laughs> Cheerio. Cheerio, Mona. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>